quarter 3, 2022, and NVIDIA has officially killed SLI support. However, did you know that you can actually SLI cards that were never meant to SLI? And you can even SLI cards that are not the same. For instance, back in the day, you can SLI a 480 and a 570. What if I told you you can still do something similar, but just the same GPUs? Well, what I have here are two Titan Vs. These graphics cards were never meant to be SLI, and not only that, you can't really fit a bridge on them unless you modify the cooler. So today, I'm going to SLI these Titan Vs without a bridge on this computer. Let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is go into safe mode and DDUR driver. So just click start, settings, recovery, advanced startup. All right, so we're going to click troubleshoot, advanced options. And we're going to do startup settings and do restart. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and do safe mode with networking. So next, I'm going to go to our DDU right here. And we're going to go ahead and run this as administrator. Alright, so here we have GPU, NVIDIA, and we're going to do clean and restart option here. And now it's just going to remove the drivers and restart. You might want to make sure you don't have any updates and not run into this issue like me. So yeah, we'll be back once this is done. Alright, so even though I have my internet unplugged, it's still installed drivers automatically. That's fine. We're going to install the 44614 drivers. I believe these are one of the last drivers that actually works with this method. So we'll install this. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is install the driver. So I'm just going to select custom and I'm just going to install the stuff I want. So it looks like we're running an older driver. It's fine and we'll let this install first. All right, so the driver has been installed. So I'm just gonna restart the computer. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna boot with driver signature disabled. So just like before, go to recovery, advanced startup, and click restart now. All right, so this time we'll click troubleshoot, advanced options, startup settings, and restart. All right, this time we're gonna do, we're gonna do disabled driver signature enforcement. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and go into our different SLI folder right here. We're gonna right click our install file and click edit. We have this right here and we need to replace this so you just go to this PC go to your C Drive Windows look for system 32 then look for driver store file repository and then here it's probably gonna be like this you need to click date modified and then here's your driver so we're going to replace everything with this. Now, before we do this, we're going to come here and we're just going to highlight this section right here. You're going to right click, click copy, and then edit. I'm going to click replace. And then you're going to find this. And we're going to copy this. And then here we just replace and do replace all. And that's it. So now here we should have the new one. So we're just going to do file, save. All right, so now we need to boot into safe mode again. So we're going to click start, settings, and we're going to look for recovery. And then here we're going to click a restart now under advanced startup and click restart now. And then we're going to choose safe mode with networking here. All right, next I'm going to open up the file re repository folder here and we're going to look at the file here. As you can see, the date is from 2020. So now we're going to open up different SLI auto folder and we're going to right click install and run it as administrator and then press enter. 
and as you can see one file was copied so now if we look at the file as you can see it has a 2022 date so it has been modified so now we need to restart again and this time we should be in windows test mode all right so we've restarted and as you can see we're now running in test mode so I'm just gonna go ahead and right click and we're gonna look for the NVIDIA control panel because now we need to enable SLI. So it should be an option now. Let's see if it worked. It's taking a while to load. All right, so as you can see, it says configure SLI. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see the whole picture here. So now I'm gonna click maximize 3D performance and click apply. Ah, okay, and then now I'm going to go into Task Manager and kill these two tasks. And then once I do that, I'll click Continue. So let me just do that. All right, I hit Apply after killing those two tasks. So as you can see, it says Applying Changes, and it has been enabled. All right, so we're running an SLI now. So why don't we check out some benchmarks to see how it performs. Now, before we go over the performance numbers, I want to do a little disclaimer. This computer is 12 years old. Well, the motherboard is. So this is the EVGA Super Record 2 motherboard with dual Xeon CPUs. Each CPU has six cores. That's 12 cores. However, these Xeons are equivalent to what would be an i7-980X. They're basically very old. So not only that, but the PCI slots are 2.0 x16. So the results you're gonna see, they're gonna be kind of bottlenecked by my CPU. Obviously, if you have a newer setup, it will be much better. If I were to use this computer, which has an i9-10980X and PCI 3.0, obviously the result would be better. But I was still quite surprised how good of a performance boost we got, even on this old platform. Let's take a look at the results. All right, starting with Firestrike, as you can see, when we enabled SLI, we actually lost performance in both benchmarks. Now, one interesting thing to see here is the GPU score of the single Titan V versus the Titan V in my 10980X. There is a significant difference in performance, so we are being bottlenecked by the CPU. So what we'll do is we'll run TimeSpy, which is a higher resolution, and then we'll focus on 4K benchmarks because at 1080p, it's not looking good. But don't worry, it gets better. So looking at TimeSpy, as you can see, the results have been a little better in TimeSpy Extreme. In TimeSpy itself, they're not that much better. But our bottleneck is becoming less. Now in TimeSpy Extreme, as you can see, our Titan VSLI is almost as fast as my 3090 Ti. This is pretty good, but to be honest, a Titan V SLI setup with perfect scaling should be able to beat a 3090 Ti. So we haven't reached that perfect scaling just yet, but these are just numbers. Real world performance is measured in FPS. So instead of looking at these numbers, let's take a look at the FPS, starting with Firestrike Ultra. All right, looking at the FPS here, as you can see, while we're not getting double the performance, the FPS increase is still pretty good. I mean, 48 to 64 FPS isn't that bad. Obviously 25 to 37, isn't that great but we are starting to get some scaling here and if we look at time spies fps numbers things get better for us now as you can see here we're getting almost 70 percent scaling which is pretty good our titan vsli again in fps levels is almost matching the 3090 ti so this goes to show that when we increase the resolution the scaling gets better which again points to my cpu bottleneck and pc express 2.0 x16 bandwidth bottleneck because my pca bus is running like at 20 percent usage and afterburner but still that's not bad now looking at gaming things get better so heaven 4.0 didn't get a significant increase in performance but check out rise of the tomb raider we're getting a pretty big difference in performance here and this is how sli should be performing and if you look at Crisis 3, we get similar results here. So these games show that at 4K, our CPU is becoming less of a bottleneck and we're able to get pretty good scaling through PCI Express 2.0 bus. Now, obviously, if we had a bridge on these, we might be getting way better scaling. And again, like I said, if we switched to a more modern CPU, we'd get even better performance. So, so far, this has been pretty good, actually. 
All right, so as you saw from the results, we got a pretty decent bump in performance. Now, obviously, if you have a bridge, you might get better performance. If you're not using an older platform, you'll get better performance. What I'm really curious about is if this would work on something like a 4090. Now, you did see that the drivers I used were the 400 series drivers. I don't know of anyone that's gotten 500 series drivers to work. And the method that we used was the simplified version. You do have to do hex editing to do the modified file, but I provided that file for you already. So yeah, there's that. But anyways, let me know in the comments if you do this method and which GPUs you get working. It would be interesting to see if even 3090s work with this setup, even though those are officially as liable. It'd be interesting to see if you can play the older titles in DirectX 11 and stuff. But anyways, that's that. Hope that's helped. Subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.